Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris in our Song of the Stars series. We are continuing our rapid expansion. Well, kind of rapid. We need to wait for our influence to build up between each uh, each colonization that we queue up. But we are rapidly expanding the power of our fleets. And as we do that, we are building up our ability to attack the Copenjaxi hegemony, which compared to us, they are inferior and pathetic in every way. So... Um, Okay, so we have another graveyard expedition project available, so you need to go ahead and do that. Research project, and then... Oh, nope, I, I forgot I can't queue up auto-explore. That's so dumb. So dumb. System survey. Right, you go back to auto-exploring, please. You do the same. So a couple of these ships have run into... There, looks, there are some lurkers out here. A small rectangular object on the surface of this planet is deflecting all scanning beams like a mirror. Our sensors are unable to determine its material composition. Construction complete. Any other construction ships need a job? We've already got... Interesting. We have received a communique from a previously unknown spacefaring empire that calls themselves the Nation of Nimolan. They claim to have learned of our existence by listening in on the communications of another empire we are in contact with. I represent the Nation of Nimolan. Our elected leader, Consul Kukdad, or Kudtad, hopes for peaceful, peaceful relations. Can't talk with your people, but know that we are more than capable of defending our way of life. Our superior collective greets you, Alvanians. So they're called Alvanians, evidently. All right, so you're building here. You need to upgrade when you're done. And then you just need to come here and build. And evidently there is a civilization that needs to be monitored here as well. Okay, so they couldn't find the reflecting object. We're going to build an observation post over Triumph. All right, we now have enough influence to colonize Osmodin, so let's go ahead and do that. This is a desert world. We're going to colonize it with voices populations. We started doing this in the last episode. We finally reached a point where there's not as much reason to... Um, well, frankly, there's just not as much reason to... Uh, um, use our slave populations as much. We're getting to a point where the voices can reasonably colonize some of these places. Right, so Null Osmodin is going to be the name of that colony. So where where is this new race? Ah, oh, the nation of oh, they're right up. They must have just ascended. There's a couple of uh, spaceborne empires that have just ascended in that area recently because they're tiny. So I'm not sure when you say that you're more than capable of defending yourselves. I don't know if you know what you're talking about. Construction complete. The Quivarian Interstellar Hive wants a non-aggression pact. You know what? I'll agree to that. I'll agree to that. Anomaly. Just because they're on the opposite side of the galaxy and I don't want to deal with them if we do end up going to war with them. Efforts to map the surface of this planet. Oh, nice. So we've got some engineering. Efforts to map the surface of this planet have identified a strange mountain formation in the southern hemisphere. Oh, yeah. I know what that's going to be. All right, so this... What are you doing? Are you exploring? Okay, so we've got a science ship that's going to start exploring the, the space of the Uko Pruknar Watchers. Interesting. Speaking of that, how are we doing against them? Their fleet power is superior. Their naval capacity is inferior. So notice that their fleet power is no longer overwhelming compared to us. Notice that. It is now only superior. Atmospheric readings from Beta Kali 3 do not match simulated readings. Research. Their technology level is still overwhelmingly. All right, let's investigate the giant skeleton. I really wish that you didn't have to stop everything. All right, then you need to upgrade. Oh, man. See, that's a colonizable planet right there. Oh, it's in our territory. It's in our territory. Holy crap. All right, we could take that world. It's an ocean world. Hello. 
Oh no, we need a lot more influence because it's so the close to their space. Complete. System survey. Interesting. Anomaly found. The asteroid BTM-11 is emitting some form of radiation and controlled burst. Is someone, something, trying to communicate with us? Let's find out. We're still building a lot of ships. Ridiculous numbers of ships. I use the word ridiculous a lot, don't I? I'm picking up on that. I don't watch back a lot of my content, but after a while, commentating, you begin to realize you're saying similar things a lot. All right, go ahead and survey this system. All right, so we've got... These are new destroyers that are coming out. And some new battleships. Okay, so there's a shadow play modifier. We could go ahead and queue up some more battleships now. We could. I think we've got enough money to do it again. Nice. So that's ten more battleships right there. Alien proto-civilization on Amlitzer. So many habitable worlds. I'm loving it. BTM-11 is partially hollow. Within its interior spaces sprawls a dense honeycomb structure crafted by some unknown alloy, housing containers of alien genetic material. By all appearances, this is an archive of life, the genetic record of some earlier civilization come and gone. Most of the DNA is hopelessly degraded, but there's still much to learn here. Fascinating. Alright, so now we need to colonize Kurus. Again, we're going to use the voices. You just land right there. This is going to be Nal Kurus. Done. Anomaly found. Research it. System survey complete. Colony established. Anomaly found. Optical sensors isolate a cluster of shapes on the barren surface of Amlitzer 5 that could be buildings. Well, then research them, please. All right, so it said colony established. Where exactly? It must be with some of the... It must be one of the systems or one of the colonies in my interior that I've queued up recently. Speaking of that, we have an Arctic world here that we probably need to go ahead and set up for colonization. So let's do that. We've been doing this a lot. Let's just let's put the voices down. This is going to be Null, Ceridon. Colony established. Special project complete. Organic starship. Okay. What have we here? Research agreement. Uh, nah, I don't want to be that close to you. We're going to be enemies eventually. <laughs> Even if we don't get to that in the series, we're going to be enemies eventually. That's just the way it's going to happen. All right, so same thing. Let's go ahead and just land the voices. This is Nal Abnol. More engineering research done. We are almost done with some of our projects, including the most exciting one, gene tailoring. Well, actually, all of them are pretty exciting. The advanced afterburners is going to be pretty cool. That's also a very expensive project. I'm still wondering why Sadafe and Kaineve looks the way that he does. It's weird. Situation log updated. Okay, alien barracks. This seems new. There are no civilizations out here. Now, the Zokplot alloyed world, alloyed, allied worlds might come in here. Nice. Exfilo Capena has leveled up and gained the trait Archaeologist. Construction complete. Okay. Alien proto civilization on Ramus. That's fine. Okay, the Yeon Empire wants to trade. They want us to give up energy credits. It's fine. So it seems like Sek Goss is no longer a problem for me. Ever since I converted them. Let's have a look at it, shall we? 
Yeah, they're fine on energy production now that I've set them up to actually, you know, produce energy. Thanks for that tip. I had completely forgotten. See, this is why comments are important. Sometimes when you're playing, I'm going to go on my soapbox for a minute here. Sometimes when you are playing these games, I mean, always when you're playing these games, when you're commentating, playing at the same time, you're using up cognitive resources to talk that you would normally be using to play. So it's, I mean, human error is always a thing in games, but especially in Let's Plays. So every now and then I make just the dumbest of oversights and having people around to just say, hey, uh, Hadrian, did you, did you, did you mean to do that? Did you notice that? Um, is very helpful. So I appreciate that. Okay, the alien barracks. This seems new. I don't remember this. Science officer Felix Caprina's thorough xenohistorical analysis of the military installation on Amlitzer 5 has yielded few tangible results. The base was constructed before the planet turned completely barren. Oh, we have seen this before, haven't we? But it's, it is unclear if its current inhospi inhospi inhospitality? Inhospitability? Hmm. <laughs> it's inhospitality, but it's just my brain wanted to see another word. Is the result of armed conflict or some more peaceful or even natural process? What can be deduced of their strategies and tactics in armed conflict does not seem to have been far in advance of our own. On the upside, science officer Felix Caprina claims to have drawn much inspiration from the alien remnants. Very nice. We have some science ships that need to be given orders. Right. System survey complete. System survey complete. I so want to colonize Kodraka. But I feel like it would piss off the Ukodraknar watchers. It's a low gravity world too. Wow. System survey complete. Anomaly found. A small docking hatch leading to the interior of this asteroid is visible at the rim of a small crater on the surface. Well, research, research then. Complete. Find out why. Research complete. What do we have? Okay. We have extra trait points. Let's go to new research. I'll look at that in a second. But first... Yeah, I, I really... I feel like this is part of the story... Uh, do I want to do it? I don't know. Empire leader capacity would be nice. Leader recruitment cost as well. Let's go ahead and go for the later, the naval capacity one because that is not going to take as long to do. All right, now, Osmodin. Do we have our colony ship? All right, colony ship's on the way. We have lots of influence points. How much would it take to colonize up here again? Kadria requires... 149. All right, we need to colonize there next, period. So I'm going to save some influence points in order to colonize Kadria. We also need to colonize down here, though, before long, because... Wreckage from the craft can still be found at the impact crater. Nice. Um, yeah, these, this satramine gas we very badly need. That would be nice to discourage um, ethics divergence. System survey. Okay, so we can't go farther. Okay, this is in our space. That's why we could research it. Go back to auto explore then. Yeah, so our borders have expanded slightly. Oh no! Okay, that sound made me feel like I lost a scientist, but no. Alright, why don't you come up here? Lularobius civilization encountered. They're in, the, they're in a late medieval age with a firm grasp of metallurgy and a feudal society. The printing press is, is accelerating the spread of knowledge. And where is this? Way down there. So we control right now the entirety of this arm. And this arm has so much more to take. It's crazy. After identifying an anomaly in the gravity well of 1866, the Lumvio has discovered shattered wreckage. Okay, so extra minerals, basically, is the story there. Now it seems like there's a high-level anomaly there that I need to look into, isn't there? System survey complete. Let's see the level of some of these science officers. Fifty percent. 
Sixty percent. Sixty percent. Hundred percent. All right. So it seems like it's going to be a fifty-fifty chance, even if we send our best scientist with the foundling. This is the ship that came back. All right. Tell you what. Let's do it. Let's send the foundling back and have them research this project. So Armaton 3's toxic biosphere give the planet a very unique color scheme. Construction ship, where are you? Why can't I click you? There you go. Alright, our colony ships... Didn't I queue up Curus to be colonized? I'm so confused right now. We, we just established a colony further in our space, I know that, but I feel like I queued up an additional colony ship. Maybe I'm building... Maybe this is why. Maybe I'm waiting for a colony to come from Furtist. That's probably it. No, that's not it. They're claiming to be done now. So this colony ship's going to Osmondon. Is no one coming to Curus? Didn't I queue this up? Am I crazy? System survey. No one occurs to be building a colony ship, though. Governor Azuli Kapinet has died. So we had a governor in charge of Furtis. Let's go ahead and let's let's give them a governor again. And a governor that's gonna live. A pretty long time. Noxy Kadivan. Alright, you need to go upgrade. You need to go upgrade. It's not far to upgrade now, though. Oh, we actually have more systems in our territory now. That's nice. We, c we control all the way out to the edge of the galaxy here. That's awesome. All right, so this is Sec Iflor. Let's take a second and exp expand. Done. Very nice. So what I need to do at this point is take... that construction ship once they're done upgrading. Hold that thought. Get those done. Okay, nice. We have afterburners now. So Durasteel armor is probably one of the next things to go for. Battleship assembly arts. Ooh, <laughs> the ability to build battleship assembly arts. Yeah, let's go ahead and go for the Durasteel armor. Obvious reasons. All of our battleships are inbound to take on the first Namagnoli. And I do need to save up some influence to colonize out here. I haven't forgotten. Oh, we have an energy balance. How'd that happen? How are we suddenly losing energy credits? Explain that to me. We are receiving a weak signal from the surface of the moon. Research it. How are we suddenly losing energy credits? Is it on account of all the ships? Is that what it is? The army maintenance costs? That must be it. Oh, that sucks. I mean, we can manage it for a while because we can trade minerals for energy using our trade buddies, which are right here in... Is it... Uh... Yeah, we can trade with these guys endlessly. All right, I think we're already trading for their spice. Nice! Nice! KJM-3 has been transformed into a tropical world. A small short-range transmitter that, that has been located on the surface of Trabano 1C. It appears to be an ancient survey marker placed here eons ago to mark a large deposit of precious metals. The miners it was meant for evidently never arrived, as the deposit is still here. Fascinating. Sweet. KJM-3 was a tomb world. It's not anymore. We can colonize it anytime we want, but I am waiting until I have how many points? 149. We're almost there. That's why. Okay, there is an extra planet. So, Nal Osmadin. That's what it is. 
That's where the deficit... Now, the deficit's gone now, strangely enough. It was this colony. Because we haven't added this to a sector yet. I knew it was something like that. Let's go ahead and do a new sector. Because we're getting room for more and more of them. Oh, we have a project in Hixaros that needs to be done as well. System survey complete. I am very annoyed about Curus, though. I feel like I queued that up and then the game just forgot. Maybe I didn't finish clicking through, but still, let's let's do it again. This is Null Curus. Let's just say Null Cure. Oh, that used up some of our influence, though. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. I've, I've been so wound up about that for so long. So we need to wait until we hit what we're close still to getting Kadria. And the exciting thing about getting Kadria is once we get that, there's a whole bunch of worlds that are colonizable by the voices that I can take. There's also a Gaia world here, but we can't take the Gaia worlds that are in our territory until these guys are... Yeah, their technology level is still overwhelming compared to ours. Our fleet power is encroaching on theirs, but that doesn't change the fact that they are still insanely stronger than me. And I don't want to do anything stupid. Research complete. What do we have? New hyperdrive. Energy weapon attack speed. That's nice. Physics lab. A new physics lab would be better. Better research. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's speed up our physics research. Abandoned ship has been left to drift aimlessly above the planet. The massive sails. Okay, it's a solar sailing ship. Alright, so our ships are starting to arrive. All right, so here's how this is going to work. We're going to do very similar to what we have in the past. This battleship is going to join up. There'll be 31 here. Let's go ahead and start transferring. 20. Perfect. So we have some pretty powerful fleets now. <laughs> and still growing. We have plenty of room to add more ships. All right, more engineering research gained. Again, those projects are not helping us as much as they used to. Unfortunately. All right, we're about to be able to colonize out here. So we can also colonize Kajam now, which is fantastic. Speaking of that, hang on. Um, there are other worlds that I need to queue up for colonization, right? Now that's already being done, but there were more. I remember getting really put out about this a few episodes back. This is a tomb world. Now let's terraform it. Let's terraform it into a tropical planet. Do it. Still have plenty of energy credits. What about down here? This is a tomb world too? Are we already terraforming you or what? No, we're not. But we don't quite have enough to do it, unfortunately. Okay. Well, that answers that question. Okay. Writing on the planet. Research. How are things going here? Is that being researched? Yes, it is. 92%. All right. Let's see how it goes. The foundling is almost done. Are you serious? Nothing of interest? After all that time, that level 4 anomaly being there, there's nothing there? That's dumb. I'm not a fan of that. Alright, we'll tell you what. You come up here and research... Where's the foundling? You need to come up here. It's only going to take 2% risk. You can do it. Okay, now let's also upgrade our fleets. 17 and 16k, respectively. Ships upgraded. That's going to take a little bit longer to upgrade the entire fleet here. But I'm curious to see what the numbers change to. Sector's missing resources. Oh, okay, we've got... That's right, our new sector needs to be... Hold that thought. Sector settings. Uh, you can be balanced. But tell you what, let's go into our planets and sectors. Where are you? You should be down at the bottom, right? You're our newest sector. So this is. Secosma. And we need to seed you with a lot of energy credits. 
Let's also give them a lot of minerals because we can. We can afford to. Alright, and everywhere else is good. So that should be fine. Forgot about that. But now we're set. Alright, so again, we're looking at our upgrades here. Lavas Autocracy want a non-aggression pact. Um, where are you again? You're down there. Uh, sure. So we've got lots of civilizations interested in non-aggression packs with me now for some strange reason. Can't imagine why. It's almost like we are an incredibly powerful galactic hegemony. Just a thought. All right. Terabellum. And it looks like we build, need to build an observation post there. Ships upgraded. System survey complete. Okay, so that was just letting us know that. Interesting. All right, so that was just noting that. Um, the writing on the planet was was there that we've seen that so many times as the Lumrunner passed through the asteroid belt on its way to DSS 1000 science officer Felix Capritech reported that the ship experienced a number of sudden gravitational shifts ever curious Felix Capritech dispatched a number of probes to scan the debris field to discern the cause it turns out that the culprit is a number of gravity generators of old alien make of old alien make sputtering on dying energy sources and with their polarities inverted they occasionally spew reverse gravity into the void though not with enough force to cause any serious harm not anymore science officer felix capritech theorizes that the generators one, generators once provided artificial gravity for a large asteroid in the belt but some malfunction evidently tore the rock apart a disturbing thought so that gave us some extra research and we can now colonize cadria Oh, not just yet. Need one more point. Alright, we actually... <laughs> there goes the auto-upgrade system screwing us again. Defensive pact imitation. No, not a defensive pact. Not interested. Sorry. Colonize. It's a tropical planet, so hell yes, we're going to put the voices straight down on it. This is going to be Nal Kadria. Done. Fantastic. Another new sector is going to be set up out here, and it's going to have a whole bunch of lucrative worlds. And we're going to set all that up and more in the next episode. Um, of course, we are approaching episode 40, and I haven't had the opportunity yet to use these uh, new battle fleets. So tell you what, before this episode's over, I'm going to go ahead and give the order to send these fleets to Subtraneous. All right, these ships are still being upgraded, so we need to queue the order up. But next episode, I'm going to do what I can to fight a war. And you know what? What I will do is I will let that episode run long so that we can do some damage, maybe do a 40-minute episode uh, to end this part of Stellaris, um, of Song of the Stars, since it'll be the last one uh, until the next 20 episodes air in a little while. So especially since there was a little bit of time in between, a little bit extra time in between this uh, series uh, coming back and when it first started. So, you know, it's, it's all the more fair to consider doing a little, little bit extra to... Uh, Make sure we end on a good note and conquer the Copenjaxi hegemony, or at least take some of their worlds away from them. We would actually, if we did that, we'd start butting up against the Quivarian uh, interstellar hives borders, which could be interesting. Uh, man. But yeah, I'm probably going get to get them to cede this territory to me first. I'm going to make a, de a declaration going for these five systems and see if we can get that in one war. And then we'll go beyond that in the next couple. So anyway, that's our plan. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes with science fiction, survival, and or simulation themes air every day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.